going to welcome um, Alex Whitson um, to the lectern. And Alex is uh, Head of Content for CorporateCharityConnections.com. And Alex is going to um, give us a very, very brief presentation. I think it is, isn't it? Um, it is, yes. On uh, bringing corporates and charities together. And then I think the idea is we open the floor as fast as possible, Alex, and take as many questions uh, as we can um, between now and uh, um, about 10.25. Great. Thank you, Michael. And good morning to you all. Um, as Michael said, my name is Alex Whitson. Um, I head up a department within Haymarket who published Third Sector, among other titles. Um, we produce a range of online content from video microsites through to webcasts and um, other forms of online fun and games. Um, so today, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about, I actually spoke at the conference last year um, to discuss the findings of some research that we did with CSR professionals into how to make partnerships more effective. Um, so um, I'm going to be talking about some more research that we've done more recently and the website that that inspired as well as some practical advice that's come out of the research that we've done. Um, so in September we spoke to 50 corporates and asked them how charities could go about approaching them more effectively and ultimately brokering um, better partnerships for all concerned. Um, one of the first things to point out here, and sorry this is probably teaching a lot of you to suck eggs and I know some of these themes will be mentioned a lot throughout the day, is the fact that all the corporates said that they're aware now that CSR needn't be a drain on resource, it needn't be just an added cost to the business, and also the days of it being completely monopolised by the corporate partner um, are over. You know, they were very aware that it needs to be conducted on an equal footing. Important to mention there, though, is the fact that um, whilst corporates are aware that you know, it's not just an added resource, there needs to be more work done on both sides, both corporate and charity, to demonstrate a tangible link between um, corporate charity partnerships and the bottom line. Much more work needs to go into doing that and that will really help all concerned. It's about creating win-win partnerships that give back to the corporate and give back to the charity. Um, so in terms of approaching corporates as a charity, um, which channel should you use? This is a picture of the English Channel. You'll notice as my slides progress that I have a penchant for silly images, um, so apologies. Um, but here's some options that you could use as far as channels are concerned. So you've got social uh, media emails. What I'd like to do just very quickly to get the circulation going is to have a show of hands as to which of these channels you feel is most effective in breaking the ice with corporate partners. So this is obviously a question relevant to just the charities in the room. But if you could give me, for a start, um, a show of hands as to which of you feel that social media is most effective in terms of breaking the ice with prospective corporate partners. No? Um, email? We've got a couple there. Phone? Okay, the vast majority. Um, letters? No. Attending relevant events? Okay. Uh, turning up unannounced at their offices? <laughs> oh. <laughs> A bit slow there, Andrew. Um, I think all the corporates in the room believe, uh, breathe the collective sigh of relief at that one. Um, okay, so I want to show you this slide. This is just a general slide. This was some research done by Forrester, actually, into um, the role that some key channels play in the decision-making process of business professionals. Around 40% of those surveyed um, said that they had an active role in choosing charity partners. It's a fairly general slide, and my reason for including it really is to illustrate the fact that um, the likes of social media, whilst they still play a small part of the overall in, in deciding um, purchasing decisions, are increasing at a far um, rapider rate. So the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn have doubled in terms of the role they play, and every indication suggests that will increase in years to come. Um, so bringing it back to the research that we did, 96% um, of the corporates that we spoke to said that um, they still felt the majority of charities were sending them the wrong messages. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. 87% um, said they were unlikely to respond um, to an unsolicited letter. A, a similar number said the same about emails. 54% said they were unlikely to respond to a social media approach from a charity, which is uh, comparatively less. Um, the next slide offers some insight into this. What I asked um, the corporates then was, well, tell me about your most recent partnership. What was the first point of contact um, from um, a, a charity, uh, the charity in question, that ultimately led to the deal being done? Because obviously deals are being done, so how? Um, this is some of the key things that they said. So 7% came about through contact that the corporate in question couldn't remember, probably because the um, negotiations were so protracted sure that's something that you can all relate to. 9% um, were due to unsolicited emails, phone calls, general badgering. 20% uh, were through a personal contact. 
26% were voted for by staff, and 36% were the result of online research, so finding out about the charity through um, Google searches, social media, blogs, articles, charities, uh, websites, etc. And I think what this illustrates above all is that you know, there's a lot of focus on direct approaches to corporate, um, partners and prospective corporate partners, but it's also important to mention the fact that as a charity, um, you know, the corporates, you need to put across the right online um, persona. You need to position yourself as a viable prospective partner for corporates. So when they do do searches, um, you know, you really stand out. This, this touches on the message that the corporates told us they wanted to hear, which I, I'll go into more detail in now. Um, it's about the win-win. I mentioned before there's absolutely no reason why these types of partnerships should not be approached in the same way as any other business deal that you do. Um, it's about listening to your prospective partner, listening to each other, as was mentioned in the previous presentation, and working out how you can work together as two organisations, a meeting of minds. Um, the cause. Now, this is of course an important part of it. The corporate said this is obviously a bigger part of the message in terms of reaching and engaging their staff because the staff are going to be less interested in terms of you know, the bottom line and the strategic business benefit. But if you're trying to reach CSR professionals, they also want to know a lot more. They want to know about the strategic value of your charity to their business. And this flows into, sorry, I did warn you about the silly images. <clears throat> this is probably one of the worst. Um, but this flows into areas like marketing. So how can your charity brand combine with that of the corporate to gain them more PR? Or, or if, even if you're a small charity, um, help them achieve real sort of community reach on a community local level. Um, there's a number of ways, but it needs to be approached in that way. Volunteering, it's about taking the skills of the, the employees concerned. It's not about painting fences or all these things that could be more of a drain on the charity, but looking about at what you know, the corporate staff have to offer in a way that can engage them um, you know, ticking the CSR um, box as well as generating funds for the charity. Um, Andrew Cox of Phyllis Tuckwell is going to be giving a very good um, example of that in his presentation uh, later this morning. Um, overall, it's about entrepreneurial creative ideas. Partnerships are entering a very interesting area. There's obviously a lot of economic uncertainty still around at the moment. Um, but the prevailing sentiment from the corporates we spoke to is that they want creative, entrepreneurial, fun ideas. They want their partnerships to stand out, and it's the responsibility of both parties, corporate and charity, to really think outside the box as to how to do that. And just finally, on the message front, you know, less is more. Um, my slide previously indicated the, the growth of social media. And I think what's really important about social media, and one of the reasons for that growth, is that we're in an age of communication overload. People don't, you know, if you get an email from someone that you don't know, your immediate connection is spam. If you get a LinkedIn announcement or a tweet, the connection is, oh, well, I've probably opted in to receive that. At least it is at the moment anyway, that may change. Um, so it's about really thinking, you know, how you can use all the channels out there to get through to people in the right way. Um, so we fed all of this into the launch of Corporate Charity Connections, which is a website that features videos of charities talking strategically about what they have to offer corporate partners in areas like volunteering and marketing. I've got a very, very brief video to show you as to how the site works. So you can search by things like size of charity, region, um, volunteering opportunities, etc. Stroke Association is one of the um, videos featured on there. Hi there, I'm James Beebe and I manage the Corporate Partnerships team here at Stroke Association. We work with our partners to achieve key... Okay, that was a very short clip. <laughs> um, the beauty of running the site through Haymarket is the fact that, of course, we've got a range of relevant titles. Um, not just, I mean, third sector obviously is predominantly read by charities, but we've got a range of business titles like Management Today Marketing, uh, POE Campaign, Brand Republic, um, all their associated websites. And the beauty of these is another thing to come out of the research is that a lot of internal CSR departments have been dissolved and often you'll find communications directors, marketing directors taking the lead in choosing charity partners and we've got the, the right titles to reach them effectively. Um, some examples of some of the marketing that we've done in the past, so here's some of the emails that we've sent out, some of our adverts, some of the banner adverts, Brand Republic, Brand Republic's bulletin marketing, um, some of our social media presence which is really sort of gathering momentum all the time. We're also doing a lot of other stuff, like um, we sent a DVD out to the top 200 CSR spenders on Haymarket's database, and we've just also sent them out in an advent calendar um, with uh, clear links through to the site and a letter indicating how um, 
you know, the, the case studies could really be of value. Um, so in terms of progress, I mean, we've learned a lot in terms of reaching CSR professionals ourselves in terms of marketing the site. This is the Google Analytics printout from last week. Fairly typical week, but the curve is kind of, um, uh, the average is around about sort of 4.30 at the moment. Uh, bounce rate's low, average time uh, viewed on the site is, is, is pretty healthy. Um, these are the sort of overall averages from the last six months. So one, six, seven, eight visits per month. Um, every charity has received at least one inquiry from a prospective corporate partner, which is great. It does vary from charity to charity. Um, the highest that we've received for any one charity is 19, um, which surpassed my expectations. Um, but I'm hoping that with the initiatives that we've got planned, we're also revamping the site, that they will all increase. A couple of corporate testimonials. I can see Michael smiling at me, so I'm just going to wrap these up very quickly. Um, and just, this is my last slide. Um, in terms of getting involved, there is a cost attached for charities. Um, we would have loved to have charged the, the corporations, but they simply wouldn't have paid, it wouldn't have been realistic. Um, I managed to persuade my commercial director to offer everyone uh, here today a 15% discount if they want to sign up before the end of November. And there is a tiered pricing structure to enable even smaller charities to get involved. The million figure there is, is turnover. Um, so we've got to stand in the exhibition room, so do come and speak to Shreena or myself um, or any of the third sector team if you want more information. We've got proposals as well that you can take. Um, that includes creation of the video, listing on the site, all the marketing associated, and that is it.